Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. Just after noon on a humid summer day in Missouri, six gunshots rang out on Canfield Drive. The warm asphalt was soon stained with blood from teenager Michael Brown, who had been gunned down by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. The 18-year-old was left in the street for hours as residents from the town of Ferguson flocked to the scene to see what had happened. Word spread quickly in the tightly knit St. Louis suburb that Mike Mike, who graduated high school days earlier, was dead. It was 10 years ago that Michael was killed. His death sparked an outpouring of emotion and months of protests from black Americans, desperate for an answer as to how another unarmed black man could be killed by police. Authorities responded to the demonstrations with militarized police, who shot rubber bullets and tear-gassed protesters who had gathered. Witnesses said they targeted both peaceful demonstrators and others who used the chaos to begin looting. Wilson, the officer who fired the fatal shots, said he shot Michael in self-defense and was never indicted on charges of criminal wrongdoing. Though many question the circumstances surrounding Michael's death, there's no denying his death had a powerful impact. A decade on from that fateful night, U.S. News spoke to some of the protesters who were on the ground soon after the shooting, about how Ferguson has changed since Michael's death. These are the words that met Janetta, Netta, Elsie when she logged on to her Twitter account on August 9th, paired with a photo of Michael lying lifeless in the street. I was like, what the F asterisk 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 is happening, she tells U.S. News. If you don't know Missouri, it's hot as hell. It was summertime and really humid. People were saying Mike's body was laying in the street, in that heat, for hours. That alarmed me. It made me aware of the cruelty of the moment we were in. Netta and her friend drove to Ferguson after work that evening. She recalls that, initially, not much was going on near the crime scene. However, she did overhear small children who lived nearby Canfield Street say to their parents, Mike Mike got killed. Hearing that come out of the kid's mouth and seeing Mike's blood still on that street even after people had tried to wash away his blood earlier that day, she remembers. Those two moments are what made me keep showing up. From the mouth of babes, right? Netta protested in Ferguson for the first few days after Michael's death, but she says the situation was made more personal after police militarized to address reported looting on the same night as a candlelight vigil. They had on full armor and M16S in their hands, while we had candles, she explains. On day five of the protests, she was tear-gassed for the first time. That's when I was like, oh, y'all f asterisk 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 up. Now this is personal. They were messing with my health, I'm asthmatic, says Netta. I got tear gassed and shot on the same night, with rubber bullets my tax dollars paid for. After that night, there was no turning back for her. Netta took part in the Ferguson protests, which would go on to last hundreds of days, and documented each night on her phone, earning her the title online of social media activist, which led her to her current job of policy work and consultancy. The scenes that Netta still can't shake 10 years on are those of children being in the line of rubber bullets amidst the chaos. Having welcomed her own son three years ago, she now has a different perspective on her time in Ferguson. For the first eight years or so of doing this work, I was childless. Now, I have a husband and son, both of whom are black, she reflects. It's a glaring reality that all of the work that I have been doing, while it does impact me, has impacted people I hadn't even thought of yet. Like many other Americans, DeRay McKesson first watched the events in Ferguson unfold on his phone, nearly 600 miles away in Minneapolis, Minnesota. When he witnessed protesters clash with the police, the former teacher packed his car and posted online en route to Ferguson. He tells US News, I remember thinking, we gotta figure out what's happening. I want do something and I don't know what to do. I had never been an activist in that way before. But if I couldn't give up my weekend for this, then did I really care? The first night DeRay was tear-gassed, he says it changed his life. The Puh